Hey, so someone online asked, um, how would I recreate this design in CSS? So I've got a link to the image here, and then I created a div with a class and the text. Um, and I'm going to try and recreate this using just CSS. Um, by first glance, uh, it looks like it would be really easy. You just, you know, give it a, uh, a font color and a, a, a font family, which I already looked up and found one that's pretty close. So we'll apply that in a moment. Um, give it a background color of white and then a border of bluish and then um, the text color bluish, maybe font bold or something. And then um, you would give it a little chamfer in the bottom corner of the, the border, except that there is no chamfer built into CSS. So we're going to fake one. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and just try this out. So first off, I'm going to make the background color of the page. Um, just something a little bit a little bit darker so we can ensure that we can see that this will be transparent and on a transparent background. And let's dive in here. Uh, dots chamfer. Um, border one pixel solid red uh, background with my background up here with uh, pixels um, background of white let's back that off to 220 uh, to 50 oh uh, I need to set up margin and stuff first border margin padding That looks about right. Let's be lined up. Um, let's get the font in there real quick. Okay. Ooh, that's a tough call there. Yeah, go 12. All right, um, so let's get some of the colors a little bit more accurate. And let's see here. Uh, this guy, it's a nice bluish tone. Do that. Uh, border. Typically, I'd give that a much better name, but. I don't really know the context of where this um, will end up at. So maybe a chamfer border? I don't know. Okay, that looks about right. And then... That is too light. Let's try that guy out. Oh, looks a little bit too dark. Hmm. Kind of massage it into place and make it look a little bit closer what that original color kind of looks like with all the anti-aliasing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, it looks about right. All right, we'll go with that. Um, color there. Cool. Boom. All right, so it looks about good. Um, that's a good starting point. Now well, let's get the width of this back down to something reasonable. Uh, that's pretty close. Let's, uh, let's not eyeball it. Let's actually get in there and push it around so it looks about in line with that. I want it to be about one pixel wider than um, the first pixel that starts going up diagonally. So that's where I'm going to go with. 
All right, 212. Okay, now we get into the fun part. Um, where's that? There it is. Let's go ahead and make that red so it'll be really easy to, to see. And then give it a width. Okay. Why am I not seeing these guys? Oh, because I need to give it a display block right no Put some text in there where are these things at okay so they can exist they don't okay that was weird just wasn't updating okay cool so let's do inline block and do the same thing up here now for this to work, I'm going to uh, there we go. Um, okay, so for this stuff to work, we're going to need to make sure that this chamfer box is a set specific height, um, I think. Yeah, yeah, you could probably do it dynamically, but just for this example, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it a little bit easier than that. So let's do a okay, okay, and so I can kind of see through those guys now. All right, um. I want these guys to be positioned absolute. Oh, um, I need to give this guy a position then. There we go. That's better. Okay. Um, All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. So now we're getting somewhere. So let's set the absolute height of this sucker. Let's give it a, let's do it by a line height so it will center that text properly. Um, okay, so it's a bit more than I wanted. What is that? Huh. Well. Is that messing with me? This is one of those things where I need to do one of these. Um, yeah, okay. That should make things a little bit cleaner. Wasn't playing around. Forgot to do that. Should have done that at the beginning. Um, also should be using normalize and stuff, but am I using normalize? Yeah, I am, good. Okay, um, cool. So that means I need to push this stuff over some more. So let's come in here and... Right about there or so, okay. And then... Grab these guys and change their heights. About half. Looks to be about 17 or so. Okay. I'll go ahead and make it that way too. Cool. And. Wait, what? 
Oh, I forgot. I changed the value of this. And I didn't save it over here. So let's do that again. Um, uh, 232. Okay. Um, now let's move this guy on over. Um, That looks about right. Yeah, there we go. And then let's give it the same border. Okay. And then uh, there we go. Zero pixel, okay, and then after this one's going to be a fun one. Order with hmm. Okay, so this is going to be tough now that I think about it, because to create that triangle, I'm going to have to um, create a border that's pointing to the upper left and then have another order or I could do a transform on it. That'll work. Okay. Um, which means I'll have to do a little bit of stretchy stuff on it, but that's okay. Um, we'll do zero pixels, one pixel, zero pixel, zero pixel. And then um, bottom zero pixels. Get rid of this, move this one over to here. Okay, that looks about right or so. Let's uh, set the background to pure white. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. Um, and this top should really be negative one then. So it lines up with that border properly. And then we'll get rid of this now. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Cool. Um, rotate Z five degrees. Will that work? Okay. All right. So now we have to really get in here and do some positioning nonsense um, to cover up all that stuff. So on the after, let's move that into position. Uh, this guy. Okay, so that looks about right. Let's put the width of this one a little bit bigger now. I don't understand what it's doing there. Oh, okay, I want width, I want height. That looks about right. Let's twenty three. Okay, so um, bottom three, right, negative nine, height 23. Bottom three, right, negative nine, and height 23. I think that's about right. Um, okay, it's done, it's perfect. Um, not quite. But it's close. Um, that's pretty close there.
that looks pretty much it, right? That's about it. Okay. And we can see that it's on, so 41 degrees there. Um, so 11 to 22. 1 to 22. And 41, I think. Is that it? Yeah, that looks about right. Cool, and we can see that the background is transparent. Um, if we click on the body, we can adjust the background color and see that this is on a transparent background. And can we clean up these styles a little bit here? Um, oops. Let's move that down to here, since we've got our own right, and move this height down to here, since they both have unique heights. Um, the border width is fine. And so there you go, that's about it. So then I can come in here and do another one and say about us. And what happens if I make this a block? Yeah, everything still works. Yeah, about us, about our company. which is pretty neat. I just want to see what happens when it gets too long. If it gets too long, it breaks. So to prevent that, we should be safe in this stuff. We want to have this specific um, width set here, and we want to have a uh, text overflow. I can never spell this ellipsis, I think. I don't know. Overflow hidden. And then uh, what's the other thing I need? It's like a word, word wrap, pre, something like that. I can never remember that one. Uh, it's like white space something, right? White space pre, that's it. Yeah, that was close. All right, um, it's one of those things you rarely ever use. White space um, pre, okay. And then let's do some padding, zero pixels. So I want this one to be 10 and I want that one to be 10. Right, and then let's try 20, 40, 50. Why is this not working anymore? I added these three guys to it and it broke. Why is that the case? Let's inspect and find out. It's creating a before and after, but they don't look like they really exist for some reason. Is it because of this? That's one of the things I changed, but it doesn't seem to be related. Is it because of the padding? Is that it? Let's just hop in here and play around a little bit and see what's going on. Um, that doesn't seem to be it. So that, it's the overflow hidden, is that what's doing it? Hold up, is that right? Pause in the video.
Okay, so I have an idea. I went to look stuff up and I couldn't find anything that was of use to me, but I only spent like maybe a minute or two. All right, um, so my idea here is let's wrap these guys, the inside of them, with their own thing and have that have the overflow. Okay, and then um, okay. And then we need a set width. gonna work there we go okay um, so that'll do so that means I can get rid of all of that in fact probably safer to get rid of it entirely and have that handled in here um, That's interesting the way it broke all that. What happened right here? So this guy looks like that. Did I spell something wrong up here or something? Span, oh yeah, in span. Ta-da, that makes sense. Okay. And then I can just come down here and I just want to get that last dot into frame. Looks like 212. Okay, there we go. Yay! So now if um, if our text goes on for too long, Hey, whatever, there we go. It just overflows like so. Now, um, and then obviously you'd want whatever the text is here to be added as a title equals that. So that way you could still hover over it and see the full length if it goes too far. But yay, there we go, we created the thing. Um, I think the height of it is a little bit taller than it was up there, and that can be adjusted slightly, but, you know, that's roughly the idea, and that's how you would create it. So, I'm using a font. I've picked two colors for the border and the font, uh, the text color. Um, applying box sizing border box to everything on the page, um, giving a random background color so we can make sure that it's on, it's transparent. Um, the image there just as a reference. And then the actual meat of all of this. So we've got um, the chamfer itself, which I think this would be better if I just came in here and turned things off as we went. So the position relative, which if we don't have, then it's uh, pseudo elements of before and after won't be able to be positioned properly. So if I disable that, then it's going to try to position these guys based off of the next highest parent element that has um, positioning applied to it, which would be the body in this case. So it's going to go to the absolute positions of the body because these are set to absolute. So instead, we do a position relative on the chamfer div itself. So that way, the before and after can be um, positioned absolute to their parent element of this guy. So um, that's the first thing we do. We set a display block just because um, I didn't want uh, these guys to uh, run into each other sideways, but that doesn't seem to be doing anything for some reason now? Interesting. Oh, because it's a it's a div. You don't need to put a display block on it. It defaults to that. But if we did display inline block, yeah, then it just looks like this. So 
Um, I don't really want them to be next to each other. They look like they go on top of each other better. So I'll get rid of that. Um, there we go. Um, the width is arbitrary, but I'm just making it match the image. Um, the background color, again, uh, is semi-arbitrary. I think it would make sense to do um, a uh, chamfer. I'm going to put these in a better order. I have a very specific ordering uh, system for how to order properties and variables and stuff, but uh, you don't need to worry about that. It helps if I spell background correctly. And then down here, we'll set that and that to be the correct thing, which means now I can come up here and I can change this and make it like cyan or something and everything updates and looks like you would expect. Or I could make it something that doesn't look terrible. Um, cool. So back to here, um, the border, woo, uh, that is looking kind of funny uh, because we are using box sizing border box. So without a border, um, everything kind of goes wacky there. So we definitely need a border. Um, we're doing one pixel just to max what's in the screenshot up there. Uh, margin, seven pixels. Again, just to kind of push it away from the edge, just like in the screenshot. So it's lined up a little bit better. Color, font family. It's pretty close to what we have there. Um, font size, get it about close to what we had there. Um, out of curiosity, font weight, 700. Okay, because I'm already importing it as that, that's the only thing that shows up. Um, line height is 12 for some reason, I guess, just because it looked nice. Can I make that smaller? Yeah. And that is about what, what it looks like there. So if we make that 8, let's make the line height 8, and then adjust the height of this one to there. There we go. That's a, even closer to what the original looked like. Um, yeah, it's pretty close. Um, let's keep inspecting and going through. So the line height is to set the height of the, um, the chamfer div and also to center the text. All right, now let's look at the fun stuff, the before. So I've got, uh, I'm targeting the before and the after together, first off, because there's going to be a lot of stuff, similarities between the two of them. Um, first off, the width is going to be about the same because we want the div itself to end right here. And then we want these two extra boxes to go out um, and extend to this point. Um, to, to go further. So they're going to be the same distance, both of them roughly. So um, we're going to set uh, them both to be, they're going to have a lot of shared properties because of that. So first off, content. Um, if we don't have uh, this, then they don't exist, period. Oops. They are, yeah, they, just, they stopped existing. They're not even over here in the DOM anymore. So let me do something to cause them to come back. There we go. So, um, yeah, the content, you have to at least have an empty string here. Otherwise, they, they can't exist. So pseudo elements need content, even if it's nothing. Um, positioned absolute so that we can then um, push them into, into place using the top, left, right, down, uh, bottom, I mean. Um, display inline block is pretty arbitrary because they are, um, uh, oops because they are um, uh, positioned absolutely. So their display type is really arbitrary. doesn't matter at all. So I'll, I've removed that. Uh, the width, the width here is, uh, let me bump that up to 27. So that is affecting, uh, it looks like the width is set one of these other ones maybe. No, I guess they both use the same width. Okay. 
Um, yeah, width and height need to be set so that these boxes exist and have a, you know, physical appearance on the page. They need a width and height um, because they don't have any content inside of them to auto set the width or height. Um, we're giving them a background color. That's kind of neat. We turn that off. Ooh, ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, and then the border, uh, where we are choosing a full one pixel all the way around. Um, and then, uh, the border color to match whatever the border color is for the parent. So that's the overall shared style between the two of them. Um, this first one here, we want a border on the top and then on the side. So we get rid of that. We can actually see that it's, um, that it will do the, the other side in the bottom as well. So turn that on and it just gets rid of those other two sides. So the top left, both ones empty. Cool. Um, we are applying, updating the height slightly here, giving it a, a, its own unique height. So it's a little bit shorter. So before it starts touching the diagonal part, um, and then we are just very carefully positioning it. So we want to set it instead of the default, which is top left zero, zero, we want it to be top negative one. So it goes up one so that its border is in line with the parent's border. And then we want to set to the 16 and we want to do, I mean, we set it to, to the right side and the negative 16 pixels so that it uh, goes off in this direction um, to expand the size of the thing. Uh, cool. After, so this one, we are rotating it so that it will make that diagonal for us. Um, and setting the border so it's only one side. Otherwise, it looks like that. It's kind of cool looking. So we can see it's just a it's just a box that's positioned there and we rotated it and then hide three of the sides, basically. And yeah, so the height is just for that and yeah, the distance positioning it. So that's about all there is to it. So that was a whole bunch of fun. Um, we're going to call this chamfered border. Cool. And then, yeah, we, uh, we also added in this inner span here as well. Um, which maybe that's where the line height should be set. Because it's cutting off the text in there. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's change the way we're doing that so that the line height is not related and that the margin is There we go. So 8 seems to be pretty good there. Okay, save. There we go. So now the text isn't being cropped off anymore. That's a lot better, I think. Okay. Now this is um, very uh, fragile. So it's uh, that's that's why we added in that ellipses. So it'll be a little bit stronger. But like, if you try, if you want this to make this a little bit wider in the future, you're gonna have to really get in here and and play around with these settings. Which means to make this a little bit less um, fragile. You should go in and find um, all of the parts that interact with each other and make them uh, math-based. So, um, like the the this this height right here is something that is directly related to the height of the parent, and that is based off of the margin. So, if I make this um, 20 instead, then suddenly this height needs to be extended to go down more. So whatever this value is set to, right now it's going to be set to 8. So let's abstract that out to something else like dollar sign uh, chamfer height and make that 8 pixels. And then down here that plus six 
and that will work, which means now if I change this to 20, um, eh, not quite, not quite working as expected. Um, and that's because the margin is being applied to, I mean that padding, is that, no that's margin, that's the, the margin for this guy is being applied to the top and the bottom of it. So, um, this chamfer height needs to be applied to both of those. Um, well, I mean, it's going to be the same either way there, right? So I know that going in. So then I'd have to do a little bit of math here to figure out, to, to like, it's got to also take into account the font size, or the, the line height of this, I mean. Not just the font size, the line height. That, that'll get pretty complex. Um, yeah, so doing this the right way would be to make it so that you could just adjust a cup, one, one master value and everything else updates automatically. Um, but clearly that is not the case here. <laughs> we'll put it back, uh, save. And I don't care enough about this to make that perfect, but that's how you would go about doing it as you go through and clean it up there. This is just how to do it with plain CSS. If you want to do it the more robust SAS way, you'd have to go through and replace the, redo the math in here so that um, it recalculates stuff properly whenever you change settings. But yeah, that's the gist. Hopefully that explains some stuff.